Welcome everybody to Gridiron Gladiators. I am your host, Bam McGrath, and welcome tonight. Happy holidays to you all. As you can see in back of me, the tree is up, my friends. Hopefully you've all got your trees up. It's holiday season already ready, as you can see on the stairs over there behind me. Also got lights on the stairs, which is pretty sweet. Also like this whole thing. Uh, tree lights and everything gets uh, dimension a little bit more light so I don't fade in and out and stuff, which is pretty sweet. As you can see, I'm donning my Alabama gear. I love my Tide. Live and, live and die with them. And the same can be true with my team in the game. I live and die with the team too. Now they're playing a absolutely gut-wrenching game one week against BK Hog and that game was absolute classic I'm sure many of y'all have read the write-up on it and have seen BK's highlights of it uh, is an unbelievable game uh, my halfback Ingram just went off in that game 297 yards in that game and three scores and uh, most of those were long distance runs 80 yards in two 66 yard run runs for TDs uh, but we knew coming into this game uh, it was going to be a tough game against Florida Sox and Gators who I battle in evolution and uh, it was going to be a tough tough matchup I've seen what Sox and Gators has done in evolution with UCF and uh, points to the moment with him so my main goal in this game was to uh, literally bottle him up as best as I could with pressure defense and uh, hold his scoring down. Uh, I was not going to allow him to roll up 50 some points in Brian Denny Stadium, not on my team. Uh, that is not going to happen. Uh, as he found out in this game, uh, my running defense was very stout and uh, very tough to run on. I think his leading rusher was Chris Rainey, who only had 24 yards rushing. And his starting back, Dems, only had two yards rushing. Ingram, on the other hand, he followed him up pretty good. And then a couple times, Ingram broke out for some uh, runs and stuff. He had a big one later on in the ha in the second half for 21 yards out of the Wildcat. So uh, that was a big plus for his stat. The only difference was Ingram did not reach the end zone in this game. But other than that, it was a very tough game. Uh, Hats off to the Sox and Gators. You played a very well game, very well played game. It was a battle all the way. 14-14 uh, at the half, and then uh, second half, uh, that Gator defense just played awesome. Uh, picking off McElroy uh, twice uh, when I had drives going, uh, trying to punch it in. His defense just played uh, to their ability. Uh, that's why Florida is a very tough defense in any game. Uh, they were tough as nails in the 09 version last year, uh, 09 and 10 versions last year. They were tough as nails to deal with. So, what can I do now? Regroup. And so, uh, coming up this week, I got Titan Gator and the South Carolina Gamecocks. He's got a very uh, kind of an up and down year for him. He's currently two and two. He was off. This is going to be a theme for a lot of my games this year. Opponents who play me are going to have an off week before they play me. Which, just like in real life, I think it's going to help the teams there uh, in that fact. Uh, but I tell you, this is going to be a tough road uh, the rest of the way. This is my last user. Uh, game. This is the fifth and final user game of this season. Uh, start off with just absolute um, gamemanship. Five straight user games, and this is the fifth. So uh, uh, I'll tell you, it's, it's been a road. <laughs> but uh, coming in, but uh, I have to go to South Carolina. Uh, right now, it's too early to tell right now in South Carolina where they're going to be. Uh, looking at possible bowl bids and everything as we'll find out as the season moves on. Uh, two and two, they're a 500 team right now. Uh, not positive on their SEC record right now, but I think it's, it's going to be a tough road either way. Um, Sox and Gators has pretty much a very solid team uh, in the SEC East. He, the, taking him out is not going to be an easy task. It's going to have to literally be one of the worst days of his life 
for him to be playing for anyone to upset Florida. Uh, right now, uh, the biggest thing I can do with my team is regroup because uh, after this loss, we lost our number one ranking, but we only fell three spots to number four. So uh, right now, it's going to be a tough, a, a tough road back. I'm hoping to, no matter what happens with this game with Titan Gear, um, I'm hoping to ride, ride hard that road to the Sugar Bowl because I absolutely believe that if I do not slip up on any more games this year, and I still got some more. Um, I should be looking at a sugar bowl bid uh, towards the end of the year, so it, it will be a very tough road to go. But uh, but I still got my horses. We're sitting in Ingram, so it'll be a tough road to go. Right now, I'm currently four and one, fourth in the top 25 right now. So as I travel to South Carolina, uh, next up on the list, our Kamesh BK Hog. His Razorbacks currently four and one. They put a whipping on the. Mike Dreadless Penn State Nittany, Nittany Lions, who are currently one and three during his absence. They lost a tough game uh, to my Alabama team, 19-17, and then uh, they lose a just a murderous game here at Arkansas. And next up for Arkansas is Stanford, who originally was ran ran by Cam. But he decided to resign that position and take over at Wisconsin. So uh, I think he's going to do. I think he's going to do great wonders there at Wisconsin, and we'll see what happens from there. Uh, as I mentioned before, the gentleman before me, uh, uh, going back right now, BK Hog in Arkansas. They're number six in the top twenty-five. It's hard to say where they'll end up. Obviously, the West is going to be very, very tough division this year. Uh, overall, right now, it's pretty much down to me and Hog uh, winning out the rest of the year. And if it comes to me and Hog tying in the SEC, it's going to come down to me because I beat him in head to head. Uh, so it's, it's going to be interesting to see what happens. I would have to literally fall flat on my ass in order for, her, in order for Arkansas to jump me. And land in and going into Atlanta. So, right now, I'm not thinking of uh, bowl games right now. I'm thinking of Atlanta. So, we'll see what happens right now. Sox and Gators. With Florida, what else can you say? Five, whoops, five and oh. Very, very impressive. They, uh, uh, it was a very tough game uh, against Alabama, against my team. Uh, as he found out, uh, the passing game was not too much of a problem. He really moved the ball well in the passing game. Running game, on the other hand, he found out real quick how quick that defense is, uh, my defense, and trying to run outside and inside and all that type of thing. So um, I'm sure that's something he may – Probably want to, uh, probably will be thinking on in case he and I meet up again in the SEC championship. But uh, other than that, uh, right now he is number one and he is looking towards the BCS championship. Uh, will he get there? We shall see. We still got the rest of the season to go and we also got the SEC championship game in Atlanta. So we'll see what happens from there. Uh, the Paul, Oregon Ducks, ninth. In the top 25, they're ranked in the top 10. They're at three and two right now. They beat uh, Colorado like crazy, and now they uh, go to UCLA to battle them next. Should be a, a good game there. Uh, the Paul right now is trying to uh, stay in the hunt with UJ of Arizona State in the Pac-10. As a USC right now is just not even in the race right now. So it will be interesting. We'll see what happens there. Uh, GJ with uh, Arizona State Sun Devils, currently 4-1. Uh, they lost a murderous game against Stanford, 41 to nothing. Who would have ever thought that? Uh, Stanford is a very stellar quarterback, which is one of the reasons why I was surprised CKM left like he did because of the uh, talent that uh, Stanford has this year. But... Uh, but we'll see if GJ can 
recover and move on to the next stage. Uh, next up is the Penn State Nittany Lions. Mike Dreadless Nittany Lions right now. As I said before, they lost to Arkansas. Hard to say when Dread will come back. Um, right now, he, right now he's on autopilot, and his team is one and three right now. So it'll be interesting to see what happens here uh, during his absence. Uh, hopefully, he doesn't miss too much more of the season. Otherwise, uh, his team's going to be out of the bull picture altogether. Uh, Ken Ten. USC Trojans, he is also in the same boat. If he doesn't turn it around fast and hard, he is also looking out of the bowl picture right now. He currently won his last game against East Carolina 40 to nothing, which is a which is a good start for him because he needed that game to uh, get himself uh, in the W column. Uh, so currently he's one of four, but right now he really needs to turn around if he's going to be even close to a bowl picture. Uh, I think right now the main stage of uh, the game for him is survival. Uh, remember, six wins get you in, my friend, and uh, still plenty, plenty of the season to go. They host, they get uh, Washington State coming up, who are currently coming to match up three and one. So that will be an interesting battle. And uh, on the other side, now we got the Big Ten, the uh, Michigan Wolverines. Mizzle runs that team, and he currently won the Brown Jug against Minnesota, 27 to 11, and a great game there. He's currently two and two, a little different than what I was expecting. I was thinking he was going to take Denard Robinson and the rest of that spread offense of Michigan and all that type of thing, just run it, run it, run it till the cows come home. But uh, early on in the season, it did not kind of work out that way. Yeah, rough beginning. Uh, he got an upset loss to um, Arizona State, and uh, that kind of threw a little wrench, a little wrench. <laughs> And the armor. Uh, so right now he's hoping to finish hard and fast. Uh, the road does get a little bit easier for him uh, as Amiak decided to leave Ohio State after losing horribly to BK Hogg in Arkansas. So I think the road got a little easier for him at Michigan with uh, Amiak leaving Ohio State. So we'll see what happens with the Wolverines as they move on. They get uh, they are off this week, so uh, get plenty of rest there, my friend. Also in the ring, RJ and Mika, who runs the Spartans of Michigan State, a team that Nick Saban once at one time coached, and uh, he did a fabulous job, great comeback win against Iowa, who is currently the spot I'm in right now, fourth in the nation, and uh, fourth in the top 25. I mean, and uh, he won that one. In, great style 20-25 so now they get a easy game this week as they get the Raging Cajuns on Louisiana Lafayette should be a easy win so to say so we'll see what happens there he's currently 4-0 and 22nd in the top 25 as I said before Titan Gator of South Carolina 2-2 two and two. he's off this week he gets me next and it's just a matter of when we will play uh, hopefully uh, pretty soon and also Last but not least, Seacam, who bolted from Stanford, came from the Pac-10 to the Big Ten, decided to take over Wisconsin Badgers, who are currently 2-1. and one. As they were off last week, probably a good thing since a new coach comes in, and this week he gets the Mike Dreadless Nittany Lions. So uh, yeah, we'll have to see what uh Seacam does with Wisconsin. It will be an interesting road there. Wisconsin's currently 13th in the top 25 right now and uh, looking good. And uh, we'll have to see how it all bowls out. But right now, uh, it's kind of hard to say bowl projection wise. Um, uh, right now, GJ and Arizona State, they may have the. They may have the track towards that. Uh, um, to the Rose Bowl, we'll see from there. Other than that, uh, have yourselves a great night, gentlemen. This is uh, Bowl Projections, brought to me, and I'll catch you guys later.